Hello there, I'm another Magento dev, and it turns out there's a part two to this EAV tutorial or EAV video, um, the one that I've just done. I'll put a link in the description and a, you'll, you'll find it. I'll put a little thing that slides across. So this is like a, a bonus feature on a DVD. So you're going to get something extra here. It turns out we needed extra functionality and it turns out it also forms the basis of another lesson for you, another sort of, I hate saying lesson, it sounds like I'm dictatorial in some way, but I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to share some information. So um, the lesson is um, on this, you see down at the bottom here, other, please specify. Well, where do you specify? Let's build it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna. This is a good point because it, to 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 pick up really as a part two because we need to then upgrade the upgrade data, and this is how we do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another um, another EAV setup script into um, basically this bit into here to add this time a text area field that we're then going to be able to uh, show and hide depending on a, a drop down um, the, the, you know the drop down selection on, on that other screen so there's a few little bits in here so it should be interesting to to watch for for beginner magento devs right and so let's start by replicating this obviously some of this is, is probably obvious but I'm going to run through it anyway. So I'm going to add another field and I'm going to call it specify other. Okay. And then in here, I'm going to say specify other. And make sure. I filled these in. And by the way, you need this twice because if not, this is the part that Magento identifies as being the entity that gets saved to. So if you miss that bit off, essentially, it'll all work on the front end. You'll see it and it'll be there in the admin, but there'll be no link. So when you save on the front end, it won't, it won't save through to the, to the admin. To the to, 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 you know to the customer account, so I'm just going to put these in this in the same place so I can I'll change that. I didn't need to. Um, that one's the head about us one. So I'm going to keep this in, right? And now the inquisitive among you are maybe thinking, well, if you're you've already added the head about us entity the EAV attribute, why do you need to keep it in there? Why keep that in? Well, I haven't pushed it to the server yet. So if I remove it from my upgrade data script, it's never gonna get onto it. It may be on my local because it's a one-time thing, in it? It hits the database, it's there, it never runs again. It needs to, it needs to stay in there because, I, well, I planned, I'm planning for it to stay in there because when I push to my server, I need both fields to hit the, um, to hit the database. Um, obviously, if you've already sent this to the database, sorry, to the lab database or the staging database, you know, whatever your process is, then you can remove it. But in this situation, I'm pretending I haven't, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it in there. Right. Um, so, what does a uh, what does this field look like? A uh, sort of text area, and it's just a really simple version of what we can already see, really. Um, so I'll just change that there. I'm giving it the next position. Um, I don't even know why I did 721 on this one. I think I just picked a random number uh, between zero and a thousand. Um, so I'm just gonna give this the next one. Um, and also, I don't want this one to be required. So required by default is set to true. So I'm, I'm having to, like, you know, it wasn't on this one. So I'm having to specify um, that it's not required for it not to be required. Okay, so what else do I have to do? Well, yeah, you guessed it. I'm gonna have to up the version again. I'm upgrade. I'm up in the version because um, I need to run this again um, in my on my local, like we've just sort of talked about. Uh, obviously, 
this version hasn't hit the staging site yet but it's sort of irrelevant because I'm going to need to see it and test it so now it'll jump on the staging site from 101 to 103 that's all but these are the files that are going to hit the, the repo they're going to then be deployed to the server and it's all going to sort of sort itself out so I'm not too worried worried about that right in. so we're going to run that we're going to run the uh, we're going to run the big four again and now because I've upped the version and because I've added my new field um, all of that should be okay to run in uh, in setup upgrade so I'm going to set that going I'm not going to pause the video because I'm going to jump straight into um, the front end now this is the type of field where I don't need to go so text area text fields this is where you see a lot of tutorials for but I'm going to cover it off anyway because I've got a bit of extra functionality I'm going to show you how to use jQuery within the PHTML file as well as a little extra um, basically I don't need to I could uh, write a function to display the label but it's overkill I don't need to because the actual saving of this um, field the text area goes on the the name and the ID or the name um, because that's what it's going to be called you know in the in the database entity anyway so it doesn't use it's not like got an option an option value that it has to then go get because those are in different tables the option values and the EAVs uh, actual attributes are in different tables and they reference each other so I don't need to go do that um, because it's going to know it's going to know which field uh, it is that it needs to save it to and it's easy enough then to, to hard code in so let's get a little bit of functionality here front end functionality going so I'm going to add um, this here which essentially inside my if statement for if there's error values because these two fields sort of are linked together. Um, by default, displaying it none. Um, called it specify other, obviously, um, and that's that's why this is how it knows to save whatever text is in here to the customer record because I'm using the same name as I've used in my upgrade script. All right. So that's that's how it that's how it does. So once I've done that, I don't need to worry about it. So this isn't going to show on the screen now, um, and I'll just wait for it to deploy. But we need to trigger it by. Well, this is the thing, right? We need to. So it's a little bit more complicated. We need to trigger it by the label, not the value, because, like I've mentioned before, when I, depending on when these fields hit the database and when these options hit the database there might be assigned different IDs different entity IDs when they hit the staging database to when they hit the lab database depending on versions and, and um, depending on other things that have that are going on on the site that I might not be in control of I might have another dev somewhere else also working on the staging site that's editing a similar area of the database and adding a new field and then by the time my field hits it might have hit it you know that my options might have hit at sort of seven six eight or something seven six nine seven seventy for example when I'm working on it locally in my version of the database but over in someone else's version of the database he's taken up those or she he or she have taken up those numbers as well so it, it's got a basically I don't necessarily want to wed myself to any particular value whilst writing this simple um, jQuery so I'm going to complicate the jQuery instead slightly to work from the selected um, selected option text instead because selected value would have been slightly simpler because you just do sort of this dot value and it knows the value um, which is sort of I'll probably over I'm probably overkill explaining that but that's one of the reasons why I've done it this way so let's bang in the jQuery so all this jQuery is doing so to get it to work on page um, obviously I could add a require JS in here um, and then add a JS file and do it that way uh, but for this amount of jQuery you know for the for the limited functionality it's providing I think it's overkill to, to go through all that and add a new file so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it in, in page like this um, some people probably frown upon me for doing that but I don't, don't care. It's a nice, simple way of doing it, and I say, Adam said it's all right. 
Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm get I'm finding the selected option. I'm getting the text. If it matches other, please specify, which is the text. Then it's going to show and hide. Simple as that. So I'm going to save that, and I'm requiring jQuery and passing it, passing the dollar in. That's that's the key thing in this. So if I just do it like this, it sometimes looks like that. Um, that's the key thing in this th this way of doing things or any sort of um, usage of jQuery, whether it's in a file, whether it's in um, a function like this. The best way to do it is to require jQuery first, just before your function. So that's all been saved. And now if I just jump on the front end, let's see if we're working. So I can select all of these. Now if I go around and select, yep, yeah, I've got my specify other field and it disappears if I don't select it. So I can now specify some text in here. Um, and I can actually create an account. Let's just pick one that I ain't done. Um, yep, yeah, all that looks good. Create that account. Okay. Let's just test it's working. This is my new account. Um, yeah, so I can see the edit button. A bit annoying. There we go. So it's all saving. So yeah, dead simple one. As I say, a little bonus feature that I'll, I'll put as part two of the of the the last video with regards to um, adding a select field and, and working with upgrade scripts. But obviously, there's not much to that. But I hope I've explained a couple of things that. Um, that are useful for you um, and obviously if you like sub content like it as I always say you know if you're watching me again you know and you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel and um, it really helps it helps me be motivated to make these these videos um, and that is it so I will no doubt see you in the next one